I'm Eleanor and I am just finishing off a PhD on invertebrates. My main area of speciality is looking at invertebrate personality and trying to understand how some invertebrates, their group level personality may be determined by the personality of individuals within that group. Um, my study system at the moment is in woodlice. This is Sherlock Holmes, um, who was in the last video. He or she, they're hermaphrodites, is a um, East African land snail. These animals are just absolutely brilliant and probably one of my favourite animals of all time. Um, so this little guy will live to be about 10 years old and within that lifetime they can lay around 900 eggs. As I mentioned, they're hermaphroditic and so they can self-fertilise. So if you start with one of these, you can end up with 900 in quite a, a short period of time, uh, which is one of the reasons why they are actually quite a dangerous species. Um, in many countries, they're very, very invasive. So they are a really interesting system to study. Oh my goodness. So there are just so many brilliant animal behaviour experiments that I could talk about pretty much all day. But one of, the, one of my favourite ones, just off the top of my head, would be... There was an absolutely gorgeous study, which I wasn't involved with, it was done by a brilliant lab, um, in which they were looking at the navigation in ants. Different ants um, navigate in different ways. The hypothesis was that it was done by counting steps. So particularly in desert environments where it's not necessarily as easy to lay scent trails, the idea was, you know, perhaps they're counting their steps. This is obviously quite a difficult thing to, to work out. How do you tell if an ant is counting its steps? And they came up with a really ingenious way of doing this in which they got a bunch of these ants and they actually went and attached tiny hairs to the bottom of their legs to make their legs longer. So essentially these little ants were walking around on ant stilts. If it was the case that they were counting their steps, you'd expect them to count the same number of steps, but because their stride length was longer, they'd move a greater distance. And that's exactly what they found happened, that you would have individual ants who would overshoot their nest because they were counting their steps, but their legs were too long. So I, I think that's probably one of my favourite animal behaviour experiments that I've ever heard of. For those of you who don't know, true bugs are a group called hemipterans, um, which are invertebrates with particular form of mouth parts. So I know that some people get annoyed by people referring to all invertebrates as, as bugs, um, but I don't at all. I think bugs is a really lovely catch-all term that people instantly know what you're talking about. Um, so, so for example, for, for someone like me, I, I study woodlice, as I mentioned. Um, so these are isopods. And if you say to someone, oh, I'm working on isopods at the moment, most people will be a little bit confused. But if you say to someone, oh, I study bugs, then suddenly, you know, you can kind of instantly make a connection. They kind of know that you work on, on creepy crawly things, even if they don't know exactly what you're working on. So, so for me, I think that uh, bugs is a, is a really great term, which is very accessible to people. And I think that people should be able to use it without being in fear of being called out for, for not referring to hemiptrons. So yes, we like the term bugs. I'd say it would be how much we don't know about invertebrates currently. Even in the UK, we, we have so many species that have been studied for, for such a long period of time. However, while we know a lot about a lot of the mammal species and a lot of bird species, there's a huge amount that we still don't know, even like really basic biology-wise, about so many of the invertebrates in the UK. Some species of ants, you know, they're so common in, in so many gardens in the UK, but we still don't entirely know what they eat. That is something that always fascinates me about invertebrates, the fact that we, we see them so much, but at the same time, there is so much still to be learned, even about the really common species in the UK. So finally, I just want to thank you again for sending in all your brilliant questions and, and uh, listening to me talk about bugs. And uh, so, yeah, thank you also from Sherlock, who appears to be trying to eat his own shell. Uh, have a brilliant day and go study bugs. Thank you.